In this video, we'll go over the process for producing an axonometric floor plan drawing, similar to this example. Um, as you can see, we're going for a pretty simple and clean drawing that really shouldn't take us too much time to make. This is a kind of a working drawing, so you could use this for like a desk crit or even your own um, design process. And then obviously, once you clean it up a little bit, it can be used for a presentation. We'll start with the 3D model in SketchUp. Uh, this is one of my second year projects that I modeled in Revit. Um, but as you can see, I imported it into SketchUp uh, to make drawings similar to this one. Uh, I did add some furniture with, through the 3D warehouse just as a way to add a little bit more detail to the drawing. So the first thing that we're going to do is cut our section. We're going to use a section tool in SketchUp. I'm just going to click the top of my building. And then I'll select the section plane and then move it down um, to the position that I want. Just want to make sure that we're cutting through all the windows and doors. Once I have the section where I want it to, I can um, go ahead and shut off the section plane and then get out of the group. And now I'm going to go ahead and add some scale figures. So I'll go to another SketchUp file that I have with some 2D figures that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse. You can see that there are components that are on face me, so whenever I rotate, they'll always be facing the camera. I'll just select a couple of these and copy them and paste them into my working file. And then real quickly, I'm just going to um, arrange them around the, the building. OK, now that I got my people in there, um, I'm going to add some text, just like the example picture had. Um, I'm going to use the 3D text in SketchUp as kind of a shortcut to um, avoid having to add the text in Photoshop or Illustrator. This is just kind of a cool trick to make all of your um, drawings as uh, complete as possible before exporting from SketchUp. So as you can see, I blew this text up, and I'm going to rotate it and adjust it to the same um, angle as that outermost wall of my building. And then I'm just going to move it around and scale it to until I feel that it um, fits pretty well with the building. And I'll do the same uh, for the other program, which is the working side. All right, now that I have um, pretty much everything done in the model, now I just need to adjust my style for export. So I'm going to choose the hidden line style, which is going to give me the black lines on the white paper space, which is exactly what, you want, what we want to export. I'm also going to turn on the profiles, um, because as you can see, uh, we were missing some lines like on these columns. Um, so once the profile lines are turned on, we get those back. And now we can see um, something that looks a lot closer to what we'll be exporting. Next thing I'm going to do is turn on my shadows. Um, this is going to be a really easy way to add another level of depth to the drawing to give it a little bit more um, of an understanding of uh, where my walls are and where my floors are. Uh, something I don't want to have shadows on is that 3D text. So I just select it then go to the entity info and deselect um, both of the cast on shadows and cast shadow options. And now I can adjust the darkness of the shadows. I'm not going to change it too much, um, but that's something you can play around with. Now that we have our shadows on, I'm going to um, set up our view. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the camera view from perspective to parallel projection. Now I can use my views toolbar to switch to ISO view. And something just about like this is exactly what I want. I just orbit or I rotated it up a little bit so I could see a little bit more of the floors. And I just want to position it as center in the viewport as possible. And I'll go to my scenes and just click add scene. And then create scene. And now we have that view saved if we ever need to get back to it. So now I'm going to go ahead and export um, three different JPEGs or PNGs to Photoshop. First one is just going to be the line. So I'm going to show off the shadows, then go to export, 2D graphic, um, select, or just I'm going to rename this one uh, lines, and then select PNG options. And we'll bump up the resolution a little bit just so it's 
high quality and we'll just export this one. And now the next one I'm gonna do is just the section cut. So I'm gonna go to my styles and then edit the edge settings and shut off the edges and profiles. So now you can see I'm left with just the section cut, which is gonna be super useful once we get to Photoshop. Just export that as we did the last one and I'll rename this one section cut and it will remember the same options for the resolution that we did last time. The last PNG we'll export is just the shadows. So if I turn my shadows back on, uh, you'll notice that the section cut is still in there when we actually wanna hide that. So if I go to my style and I can actually edit the color of um, my section cut, so I'll make it white. And then I also need to change the color of the section cut lines to white. So now as you can see, it kind of disappears and we're left with just the shadows. And now I realize I need to bump up the, the darkness of my shadows just a little bit more. And that looks good, so I'll go ahead and export that just like I did the other two. And now that we have our three uh, PNGs, we can go ahead and open up Photoshop. And we're just gonna open up all three of them. And I usually like to use the lines export as my base layer. So I'll just come to this and I'll unlock the layer and rename it lines. And now I just need to um, go to my other uh, PNGs and uh, drag and drop them onto that base file and just align them so that they're all uh, layered up on top of each other. And because we exported at the same resolution, um, everything should line up perfectly. Okay, now that I have um, both of those files stacked on top of my base file, I'm gonna rename them uh, to section cut and shadows. This is gonna make sure that we, we can keep everything organized. Now I'm gonna change them to multiply um, so that all the white space gets deleted and the black lines can go through to the layers below. The first thing I wanna do now is clean up some of my edges. Um, so on my lines layer, I'm gonna add a layer mask and then select it and grab a brush. And I'm gonna select the color, the black color. And now any, anywhere I paint on my canvas with black, it'll actually hide lines. So now I can clean up some of these lines that I don't actually wanna see And this is just a very loose drawing, so I'm not gonna like worry too much about where I'm cutting, but I just wanna get the general sense across that these lines don't actually exist on my building. The next thing I'm gonna do is add the color, um, just like the other drawing, but instead of actually coloring in the, the entire volume of the spaces, I'm just gonna color the actual floor plates because I think it looks a little bit better. So I just add a, color, a layer called color and now I'm gonna select my lines layer and with my magic wand tool, I can go through and easily select um, the, the different floor plates that I need to color. And obviously this will just be selecting the white space um, around all my furniture within each room. And then once I have uh, the space that I want to color, I can move back to the color layer grab the paint bucket tool, and then choose the color I want. I'm gonna do green for the residential side. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of the residential and then onto the other side for the office.
Okay, now that I got all my uh, color in on my floor plates, uh, it's all in the same layer so that I'll be able to come back and change the opacity here in a second. But now I need to color in the space that's behind the actual window. Um, and this is gonna be a little bit lighter just to show that there's some, um, some sort of glass in front of it. So just like before, I'm going through and I'm selecting that floor plate. And on this new layer, I'm painting the same color yellow and then the same color green. Splitting these two layers up will allow me to adjust the opacity um, a little bit differently. That way I can make it just a little bit lighter. Okay, now I can go ahead and change the opacity of the first color layer that I made. And then I'll make the window layer a little bit lighter so that you can see that glass in front of it. And we can always come back and change this later. Next, I'm gonna um, fill in the text, which is pretty simple, just using my uh, magic wand tool and then the paint bucket tool uh, to color the same color green and the same color yellow. Now we're gonna add a profile line to the outside of the building just to make it pop a little bit. So I'll add a new layer and just call it profile. And with my brush tool, I'm gonna use a black um, paint and just a little bit of a thicker line than that existing um, edge that's there. And just real quickly, I'm just gonna hold down shift and click from point to point. Um, to give that thicker outline to, to the building. Now I got my outline on there. I want to adjust my shadows a little bit. They're a little bit too dark. So if I go to my shadows layer, um, I'm able to turn down the opacity. And I actually um, sometimes like to add a little bit of a filter. Um, to, or a little bit of a blur to the shadows layer. So if I go to uh, filter, blur, I'll do Gaussian blur. And then as you can see, this kind of uh, gives it that like soft shadow effect. Um, but for now, I'm, I'm just gonna add a slight blur just to kind of soften the edges up. And now I wanna lower the opacity of the color actually, cause I think it was a little bit too dark. And now um, I'll go ahead and crop the image because I think it's just about finished. Okay, here's the finished axonometric floor plan drawing. Um, and as you can see, it really didn't take us too long to get to this point. Um, hopefully this video was some help to you guys and thanks for watching.